All right, good day once again, everyone, and welcome here to our academic year 2020-2021, our first semester. Again, my name is Mark Magango, and I will be your instructor for the subject code AMTE228, that's Aircraft and Engine Fire Protection System. And before we continue with our lesson proper, I would like each and every one of you guys to understand the very essence and importance of knowing the basics of this system. Before we uh, discuss the complexity of this system, it is important for us to understand first the foundation and the basics of the aircraft and engine fire protection system. So, fire is one of the most dangerous threats on aircraft. The potential fire zones of modern multi-engine aircraft are protected by a fixed fire protection system. So, the word fixed here describes or defines the fire uh, protection system which are permanently installed. So it contradicts the uh, fire protection system on an aircraft with you, which uses a portable uh, media such as the uh, halo or the water uh, fire protection or fire extinguisher bottle that we use and the one that we have in our uh, campus. And also an aircraft power plant and its related systems constitute a natural fire Hazard. So as we all know, everything that surrounds everything inside an aircraft or outside an aircraft can be a source okay, of fire. And because of these hazards, many aircraft are equipped with a fire protection system that can detect and extinguish fires in the engine compartment. So in this lesson, in this topic, we will not only focus on the uh, systems, the fire extinguishing systems of an aircraft. We will also discuss on how we can prevent or how we can detect the uh, fire inside an airplane. So, and that's what the uh, Murphy's Law states that um, anything that can go wrong will absolutely go wrong. So, of course, prevention is better than cure. So, we would like first to prevent uh, the fire from happening before it can damage the aircraft or before it can cause lives of the passengers. And, of course, as an aircraft maintenance technician, we okay, must be familiar with the operating principles, maintenance practices, and repair of fire protection systems. So not only being an aircraft mechanic, of course, there will be times that we will be uh, a passenger of an aircraft. So it is important for us to know what are going to be the, the uh, precautionary measures, what are going to be the steps in order for us to uh, prevent okay, the fire or at least minimize the damage that will cost to the aircraft or the passenger of the airplane. And a complete fire protection system of modern aircraft and on many older aircraft includes a fire detection system and a fire extinguishing system. So before I proceed with the next slide, I think it is safe to say that for the longest time of our existence and from the moment that fire was uh, invented or discovered, we have come a long way. As of today, we can create fire by the use of so many materials. But unfortunately, fire had uh, caused a lot of damages. It uh, had, you know, taken a lot of lives, millions of uh, peso or dollars of property. So it is important for us to understand the foundation of fire. And because uh, here's the thing: uh, of course, none of us uh, wanted to be in a situation wherein there is a there is a fire active maybe inside uh, a building. Or in, inside any infrastructure but the thing the thing is fire inside the building is way it's way different okay than having a fire inside an aircraft especially if it's a flying airplane because if you are let's say for example if there's a an ongoing fire inside the building you will have enough time to save yourself or to help others okay rather than you being inside an airplane and a fire just you know um, has been active because if you are inside an aircraft then you don't have an option to go outside or jump or else of course you will definitely die so in the airline industry okay we have what we call the fire triangle so these triangles are the essentials in order for us to create or in order for the fire to be activated or to to uh, create fire and that would be fuel oxygen and heat so fuel is any I would I would like to emphasize the word any so it's any combustible material which may be solid liquid or gas so the fuel in the fire triangle does not necessarily mean 
uh, the fuel in the liquid form, the one that we use to uh, operate the aircraft engine or the ones that we use for our automotive. So fuel in the fire triangle can be any combustible material. It could be a piece of wood, a piece of metal, a piece of paper, clothing. It could be an electrical equipment. It could be a metal. So anything that can be burned, okay, are considered to be fuel in the fire triangle. And then we have oxygen. So oxygen obviously is very sufficient. We have a large amount of oxygen inside or outside of, the, of an aircraft. And if there's a, an exact or a sufficient amount or volume of oxygen, then we can create a combustion. And that can support, of course, the existence of fire. And lastly, uh, in the fire triangle, we have heat. So heat of sufficient intensity to raise the temperature of the fuel to its ignition or kindling point. So heat is an increase in the, temp in the temperature. So each uh, materials inside an aircraft, okay, the belongings of the passengers, the equipments being used, anything inside the aircraft, if they have reached its maximum level of temperature, then there could be a possibility of ignition. And again, if we have these three aspects, okay, fuel, oxygen, and heat, then a fire can start. So now that we know this foundation, even though we haven't tackled about the, um, the systems, the fire protection system, we can still eliminate the existence of fire. And how do we do that? By simply eliminating one of these three essential factors. So let's say, for example, you have fuel, you have the oxygen, but then you were able to control the temperature, let's say, inside a room, inside a... Uh, an aircraft then of course you can avoid okay the rise of temperature then you can avoid a fire another one so let's say for example you have since you do have an exact or a sufficient amount of oxygen and the temperature is rising because as we all know as the aircraft is flying it is exposed to different uh, weather conditions so, so let's say we have heat we have oxygen but then we are able to identify this particular combustible material and we isolate it then we can avoid having or creating a fire so with you know knowing these three um factors these essential factors we can at least eliminate or we can help in making sure that fire will not start inside or outside the aircraft and we can actually apply this not only in the you know in the aviation or the uh, in the work that we will be uh, doing later on we can also apply this of course in our respective houses so we can separate the fuel okay we can make sure that the item that we place inside our let's say uh stock room okay are of um good in a good temperature okay so okay there we go so now that we have identified the uh fire triangle it is also important for us as an aircraft mechanic to identify the classes of fire I think it is safe to say that for those people who are not in the aviation industry, okay, they would say that far is just far, or in our vernacular language, apoy lang yan, walang pinagkaiba, okay, which is actually true. Far can, once again, cause or take lives or millions of properties, okay, or damage um, the aircraft or our, you know, our uh, properties. But in the airline industry, it is important for us to identify what are the types or classes of fire. Because if we are able to identify the classes of fire, we can also determine what are the effective fire extinguishing material that we can use. Because we cannot just simply take a fire extinguisher and, you know, put out that fire. Because instead of putting out the fire, you may be either electrocuted or you might be the cause of making that fire even worse. Okay, so... With the classes of fire, we have five classes. That's class A, we have class B, class C, class D, and class K. So let's discuss each and every classes of fire. Starting with class A. So class A are fires which involves ordinary combustible materials such as wood, cloth, paper, rubber, and plastic. So if you can see here, all of the options that belong to the class A, class A fires are actually present inside an aircraft, especially inside the aircraft cabin. So, of course, we have a passenger, and the passenger may carry okay, a piece of paper, a piece of wood, okay, 
a piece of rubber. And the rubber, of course, they have their clothing. Or it may be present inside an aircraft cargo or luggage compartment. So those, if the fire started because of this uh, combustible materials, then it is considered to be a Class A fire. Okay. Right. Next, we have the Class B. So Class B fires are fires that involves flammable liquids, petroleum oils, greases, tars, all base paints, uh, lacquer, solvents, alcohols, and flammable gases. So this Class B fire is actually the reason to why whenever we travel using an air, airplane, an aircraft, we're only allowed to carry a certain amount, a maximum amount of liquid. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's around 100 ml. It may vary or it may depend on the airline operator or the airport or the country itself. And apart from that, you are not allowed to carry this liquid inside your hand carry bag or hand carry uh, luggage. You are going to be advised, usually, to put it in your baggage so that it can be placed inside an, an aircraft cargo compartment. So that's one way to avoid the possibility of having or uh, creating a fire by the use of these flammable liquids. Okay. Then we have the Class C. So Class C are those fires that involves energized electrical equipment in which the use of an extinguishing media that is electrically non-conductive is important. So this is what we are uh, telling you, uh, what I've been telling you earlier, that it is important for us to identify the classes of fire. Because as we all know, in the modern uh, era, okay, the, the, the aircrafts, the airplanes that we have right now are, are called a fly-by-wire wire aircraft, or they are a flying computer, which means most of the controls are being uh generated or operated by the use of a of a computer um, plus of course the equipments that we have inside an aircraft for the, our customers comfortability so there is a possibility a big possibility that uh an ignition can happen because of an electrical uh, malfunction so let's say for example if we are not aware of these types or classes so far and let's say there is an electrical problem and because you know as a passenger or as an aircraft mechanic, you already panicked and you tried to eliminate or put out, uh, put out this fire by the use of a water fire extinguisher. So instead of putting out the fire, you might get electrocuted and again, you might be the cause of making this fire even worse. So it's one of the reasons why we have to discuss and we have to be aware and familiarize these types of fire. Okay. So next we have the Class D. So these are the fires that involve combustible metals such as magnesium, titanium, zirconium, sodium, lithium, and potassium. So usually a, um, a passenger uh, are not allowed to carry these types of metals, especially if it's a large quantity. But these metals can be or may be present inside a passenger's, uh, let's say, gadgets. Okay. And this is also the very reason to why we have what we call the dangerous goods materials or hazardous materials training or seminars for us to be able to identify what are these types of materials which are allowed or not allowed inside a passenger or a cargo aircraft. Okay? And lastly, we have the class K. So class K are the ones which involves cooking media like vegetable or animal oils and fats. Again, a passenger may or may not carry these types of material. It may be present inside a cargo compartment. And most of the time, um, since especially if the aircraft, let's say, is traveling uh, in a far distance, so of course we have something for our passenger for their comfortability or, or our, as our token of appreciation, we give them foods, we give them meals. So those meals, those foods may okay, contain these types of uh, cooking media like the vegetable or animal oils and it may be okay the cause of having a fire inside an aircraft so aside from knowing these classes so far I want you guys to also understand that it is very important for us you know to be to be very um, what do you call that to take seriously the fire drill that we have inside our campus because it will not only help us if in case the fire happens but it will also save us okay it might not uh of course uh we don't want to be in that situation 
to experience fire because it's very traumatic. But then again, if in case, knock on wood, if in case it happens, at least we have an idea on what are the things that we can do. Now we can be, of course, a great help to others, especially to our loved ones. So it is important for us to understand the very basics of, you know, the classifications of fire, the fire triangle. Before we proceed with our uh, specific fire protection systems inside an aircraft, okay? So, uh, do you have any questions? Um, I will be giving you a link for our Google form. Some, uh, uh, I think, three questions so that you'll be able to be able to check your understanding with the discussion that I uh, have. Okay. So I will end my um, I will end my presentation in this uh, classes of fire. Thank you, everyone. If you have questions, please feel free to uh, call my attention or ask your questions, okay?